Good morning. My name is Ben Hill. Today's reading is from Matthew chapter 2, verses 19 through 23. I'm reading out of the NIV version. This is about the return to Nazareth. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who were trying to take the child's life are dead. So he got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee and he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled what was said through the prophets. He will be called a Nazarene. So a couple of things strike me here. First, let's start with God. It was clear that God had a plan for Jesus and Joseph here. He wanted to keep Jesus as a child safe, eventually getting him to Nazareth where he would live just had been prophesied. So that was God's plan for this portion of Jesus' earthly life. Now, to accomplish that, God relied on Joseph. He needed to work through Joseph because as Jesus' earthly father, it was on Joseph to keep Jesus and his family safe. So now shifting to Joseph, how was he able to fulfill God's plan here? Well, first, he was ready and willing. How so? Well, he was attentive. He played, paid close attention to what he was told in a couple of dreams and had an awareness on what was going on around him. He had heard, heard about Archelaus and sensed that that meant trouble. That was confirmed by a warning in that second dream that he had. So once Joseph took all of this in and digested it, in other words, once he heard what was going on, He was then obedient, and he promptly acted. Here, he literally moved, physically taking his family to a safer place, Nazareth, which just so happened to align with God's plan here. Bottom line, Joseph faithfully followed God's plan here, and he had a role in it. So how am I faithfully fulfilling my role by God, within God's greater plan. Well, in that regard, three things come to mind. First, I am trying to hear, and I am trying to listen. How? I would say by, among other things, regularly spending time in God's Word, by reading and meditating on it, trying to understand what He's saying and teaching to me each time I do. Second, I'm trying to be aware of what's going on around me. How do I do that? One thing that comes to mind is I try to spend time in community with other people, in fellowship, particularly with other believers, listening to them, learning from them, finding out what they're going through, coming alongside them, encouraging them, and supporting them. You'd be surprised how much you can learn from your fellow people. Also, I would say by serving at the church and in the community, trying to learn and trying to identify ways that I can help make things better around me. And third, and I'm trying, I'm trying to be ready and able to act. I find this is where prayer is particularly helpful, by asking God to show me how I can help. And if you're fortunate enough to understand what God wants you to do, don't overthink it. As that phrase goes, just do it. So let me allow, to, allow, to, allow me to close in prayer here. Will you join me? Lord, I know that you have great plans for each of us in our lives. Help me to listen and help me to hear. Help me to observe. Help me to be aware. Help me to be ready and willing to act. And then when you call upon me to do so obediently, I pray that my thoughts and actions are acceptable to you and that I might faithfully contribute to fulfilling your plans. In Christ's name, amen. I wish each of you a wonderful Advent season, and eventually a very Merry Christmas.